I'm just the guy who wants people to go to Disney and to feel this magic. You know, if anybody from Disney is watching, please don't sue me. I want to give this a 5 out of 5 just because you have to see it. I'm File91E and these are my Disney News and Reviews. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Disney News and Reviews. I'm File91E and this is my 30th show. And that, me, and that also means this is my 30th week of doing this. I just want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in you know, with me all this time. And uh, it's been a pleasure doing this. Uh, I don't plan on uh, quitting anytime soon unless Disney jumps on my back. But I don't, I don't think they will. So, yeah. Uh, so here's the 30, you know, here's the 30 more. And, you know, hopefully everything will go okay. I've got some news reviews for you today. So let's get right to the news. Star Wars Weekend 2009 guests have just been announced. Listen, if you're going. May 22nd through the 24th, Ray Park, who plays Darth Maul, will be there. Uh, Warwick Davis, who played Wicket in Return of the Jedi, is going to be there. Uh, James Arnold Taylor, who voices Obi-Wan Kenobi in the Clone Wars series, will appear as a guest in the Behind the Force uh, area. June 5th through the 7th, Jeremy Bullock, uh, who played Boba Fett in uh, Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi will be there. David Prowse, who played Darth Vader in the original Star Warses. And Matt Lander, who is the voice of Anakin Skywalker in the Clone Wars series, will appear as a guest in the Behind the Force area. So, just keep that in mind. June 12th through the 14th, Dave Filoni, the creative force behind the Clone Wars series, will be there. Tamira Morrison, who played Jango Fett, as well as the unmasked clones of Episodes 2 and 3, He'll be there as well, and uh, it should be a great, great weekend filled with some fun stuff. If you're going to be down there during that time, uh, you know, check out Hollywood Studios. You're going to see a lot more Star Wars than you, you know, ever thought possible. You know, even if you're not a Star Wars fan, it's pretty interesting. Paradiso 37, a restaurant and bar featuring cuisine from North, South, and Central America, will open in early May at Pleasure Island at Downtown Disney. The menu will represent the 37 countries of the Americas, plus an international wine bar uh, uh, and 37 varieties of tequila and 10 signature frozen margaritas. Woo! I don't drink. Doesn't matter. The restaurant will feature nightly entertainment and will be open daily from 11 a.m. to until late night. I guess you know until everybody's done. Uh, Downtown Disney has introduced the Celebrate Tonight a high-energy street party that focuses on what our guests are celebrating. DJs are our party hosts to engage guests to join in with stilt walkers and a party crew for group dances and sing-alongs to celebrate birthdays, anniversaries, uh, family gatherings, weddings, opera cat, or whatever our guests want to celebrate. All while spinning the latest and greatest party hits. Located in the West End Plaza, Pleasure Island, Cel the, the Celebrate Tonight is now running 5 to 11 p.m. Sundays through Thursdays and uh, 6 p.m. midnight to through midnight Fridays and Saturdays. Check it out. should be fun. Uh, Stitch's Supersonic Celebration, a combination of live uh, dance performers and Stitch on a video screen, is scheduled to open in Tomorrowland at the Magic Kingdom on May 10th. Check that. Uh, you know, check all, all all that stuff out. Um, pretty good stuff. Not too much, you know, going going on this week, you know, news-wise. But Star Wars weekend things huge, huge. God, I don't want to go, but I can't. Somebody pay for me, please. Hey, sorry, folks. I'm sure to do better next time. It was my first flight. Okay. Anywho, uh, on to the reviews. Let's do it. Okay, now as you all know, I pick all of my stuff out at random now to help me prepare, you know, give me time to prepare, but apparently for these, I really didn't need to prepare a whole lot. Uh, the first one I picked out was Donald's Boat, and according to these guys, here's what it is. A playground, and when the water is running, an interactive fountain, a diversion ride, you can go anytime, and a favorite of the five and under set. They gave it two stars. Um, okay. That's exactly what Donald's Boat is. It's a fountain or an, you know, a playground. It's really good for you know, you know, little kids who 
really just don't want to deal with the regimentation of you know of going to Disney World and you can just you know you know kill like a half an hour here while they run around and hoot and holler and do all, all, all of their stuff as for adults you can't get on it you really can't um, it's you know I, I really there's, I mean there's nothing else to say about it I mean I mean the only reason why it's Donald's boat is because he's coming from where you know he lives I think it was Duckville Duckville I forgot you know Ducktales and all that uh, anyway um, you know, he's coming to visit Mickey and he has to use his boat to come and visit Mickey that's the only thing that's the only bit of trivia I can get uh, so yeah uh, Donald's boat for I okay I have to rate this twice but Donald's boat for adults I want to give a one. Don't go and see it. Just do not go and see this. Uh, now, if you have kids, it'll be a three, okay? Because kids will enjoy it, and I'm sure you know the parents watching their kids playing and having a good time will be awesome. But if you're just a, you know a single guy like me, I, who has way too you know you know way too many other things to be watching than going to watch you know watch kids play on the Donald's boat, and that's kind of creepy, you know. You know, creepy guys do that. I don't. I have I, I have values, and I need to go and get on Space Mountain. That's what I need to do. But if you have a kid, it's fine. You know, if your kid's playing, it's fine. All right. So yeah, uh, that's my review. I, I, it's, it was the dreaded one, but only for you know adults who don't have kids. It's a three for everybody else who have kids and their kids like that. Okay, the next thing I picked out at random was the American Adventure in the United States Pavilion in the World Showcase at Epcot. Whew. First, let me tell you a little bit about the United States uh, Pavilion. It's at the direct back of Epcot. It's the center of everything. It's the, you know, you go through all the countries on, the, on either side and you will, you know, be smack dab in the, you know, in the middle of it is America. You know, depending on where you're coming from, there's a, a stage for live entertainment on, you know, on the on, on the bay side, and uh, occasionally there'll be, a, you know, a couple decent acts there. So, uh, so you know, just, just keep your eye out for any, uh, you know, posters or anything, you know, regarding that, because uh, uh, you know they can have some pretty good live entertainment. And on the and, and on the other side is a gorgeous like uh, colonial style uh, building once you go into that building you're uh, you know you you go into this rotunda area and uh, it has all, all you know all kinds of different things like flags and different you know trivia things and uh, if you're good if you're lucky enough the voices of Liberty uh, will be there and uh, they will be you know they are a, a barbershop quartet group and it's really nice they're really good and uh, then you get to the American Adventure. Now, what these guys say the American Adventure is, is a patriotic mixed media and audio animatronic theater presentation on U.S. history. It's a headliner, go anytime. Disney's best historic uh, patriotic attraction, not to be missed for stars. And the duration is about 29 minutes. So, you know, plan on spending a little bit of time in there. Uh, but it is exactly, you know, what that says it is. You go into a big theater. And uh, there's, you're, you're guaranteed a seat. I mean, hardly. You know, I've never really seen this, bill, you know, filled up before. Um, I've always gotten a seat. Uh, and then the show starts. It's a presentation on U.S. history and whatnot. Did you have audio animatronics? I mean, uh, most notably, Mark Twain and Benjamin Franklin are the narrators. I mean, that's so awesome, right? Um, and being, you know, I'm a huge history buff, and my brother is a bit even bigger than me, so we enjoy this stuff. It's kind of like the Hall of Presidents, even though I, I, I kind of lamb, lambast it for being boring. I like the Hall of Presidents. I just like to, you know, to make fun of it because it's a, it's the butt of everybody's joke in Disney. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's a really great show. Uh, you know, a little more action packed than the Hall of Presidents. A little more to see and, uh, and enjoy. So yeah, the American Adventure. I'm gonna have to give three stars. You don't really have to hit it, um, but it, you know it's good if you do. If you're right there, you 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 really, you really don't have too much to do. Walk in, enjoy. You know, have you know, kill 30 minutes, enjoy, and you know, rub your feet. You know, because God knows you've been walking at Epcot for a while, and uh, it's a pain in the butt, right? You know, rub your feet and enjoy the uh, the air conditioned room. 
of summer days. So yeah, three stars for the American Adventure, three stars for the U.S. Pavilion in and of itself. I mean, you're pretty much seeing a theme there for the pavilions because you know, they're all good. Um, but the rides in, in each, if they have them, I'll, I'll rate them you know, individually. So yeah, there's so three three stars all around for that. I want to thank uh, everybody who who watches and supports my videos, all the subscribers and viewers, all my loyal fans, and you know who you are. Um, if anybody from Disney's watching, please don't sue me. Um, I like what I do. And uh, go to allears.net or touringplans.com. Touringplans.com makes this great book right here. But anyway, so yeah. It was great talking to you guys. I hope you got a little bit of information, and I will see you next week.